Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my bedroom. I have a very hostage-esque background today because um, my life is in ruins and it's very gross in my room and my bed's covered and I just decided to sit on the ground in front of my door which has a wet sweatshirt drying on it because I'm very unprofessional and that's where I'm at with my life. So this video is going to be a wrap up of everything that I read in the month of May. Um, I have my little notebook that I write everything down in and so I read seven books in the month of May which is really a lot for me. One of them admittingly I actually started in December <laughs> of last year and it literally took me that long to just kind of like read it and piece it all together and I was in school still so it just took me a really long time and I kept coming back to it and I read books in between and I finally finished it. I actually only have three of the books here with me and then one of them I gave to my dad and the other ones were audiobooks. So without further ado, here is the books that I read for the month of May. So to start off, I read The Three Year Swim Club, which I kind of mentioned in my book haul. And uh, that book it was great. I love nonfiction books and I love, especially love nonfiction books that are like following a story. And that is, it's a sports story. It's about a group of kids from Maui during World War II. Um, and a lot of them are Japanese Americans. So it discusses parallel stories of Japanese Americans that fought in the war and Japanese Americans that were imprisoned in internment camps. And it talks about the moral distress and it follows the story of these kids from Maui and their devotion to swimming and their devotion to the American swim team and ultimately the Olympics. Um, and you, you wonder why are they participating in the Olympics as an American when America doesn't even value them as a human being. And it's this phenomenal story of just perseverance, underdogs, Maui, Japanese culture, Japanese American culture, how that differs from Japanese culture and just absolutely phenomenal book and let me see I wrote kind of World War II's influence on sports was very apparent in um, how the Olympics changed after World War II and obviously we didn't have the 1940s Olympics because of World War II um, and how oh it discussed the sugarcane workers and how that was just another form of slavery and how they protested and rioted and got this quality of life that they did not have before and kind of put the sugarcane plantation business out of business. So it was an absolute underdog story that I think everybody should read if you're into sports, if you're into history, if you're into an underdog story, this is the one for you. If you don't like nonfiction books, I still think you would like this because it does, it's very storytelling and um, you really get wrapped up and invested in these kids and what they are able to do. So that was a really great book to start the month off. And then I also listened to Autopsy of a Boring Wife. You know, it was exactly what I needed. It's a story. It's just a fiction story. I don't know about a woman whose husband leaves her and it's her it's her story it's her rebuilding it's her it's her new coming of age you know she's in her 50s but she's coming of age again to find out who she is as a woman and it talks about therapy in a really good light um let's see her name's Diane she's really strong stronger than she thinks she is and we get to see that kind of evolve over a couple of months I think is kind of what this book falls under maybe a year it made me laugh it's a translated book I think it was originally written in French and um, it was translated and it did lack a little bit of depth it was very surface level but it made me it made me laugh it made me feel for her it made me feel like I you know I've never been in that situation but it made me feel like I got a glimpse as to what that situation would feel like and how that individual would feel like. So overall, I thought it was a good book and it was a really good listen and an easy listen and I didn't mind it one bit. Exactly what I needed in the moment. 
Another book that I listen to is A Little Bit Like Love by Brooke Blaine. I don't think it's my cup of tea. I used to think that I was really into these like mass market paperback romances. Like I feel like I used to read way too much of them. Like I went to Bartels, a drugstore, and bought them and would read them. And I haven't picked up one in a really long time. I, there's a whole section at the library that I grew up going to that was just mass market romance books. These the small, small books, uh, entire section. And I didn't really, I didn't really dig this one. Uh, Jackson and Lucas, they, it's a male male romance. Jackson and Lucas met in boarding school. They had this relationship that wasn't accepted by family and then they meet again years later and then it's like this budding romance and then them telling off his one of their families I think it's Jackson's dad and um I don't know it, it was a little weird I, it just wasn't a cup of tea I just realized if it's a romance it has to be a romance with something else like a romance that's in another genre of book and I think that I like that a little bit more and then the I listened to Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. That was a great, a great thriller. I think that's what it is. I really, it's a thriller, I think. A mystery thriller. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I'm not very good at distinguishing genres, but it was great. Um, there was a twist that I predicted and then there was a twist I did not predict. And I really liked that in the last bit of the book. I listened to it on audio. The last bit I was like, you got me, Lisa Jewell. You got me. And I haven't read a book like this in a long time. So maybe if I read more, that twist wouldn't have been as much of a shock to me, but I really liked it. And there was a epilogue that I never, I never read those, but I listened to them and it was a really nice touch. Um, and I liked this one because the basis of it is a daughter goes missing and it's the mother. It's the point of view of the mother. And this mother was relentless and she was not a damsel in distress. She wasn't incoherently distraught. Um, she wasn't kind of I feel like sometimes they make the mother very useless and she was not. She was strong. She was passionate. Um, she found love for herself. She loved her daughter. She found, you know, newfound respect for people through this process. And it was, I really liked the light that they played the mother in. And I really recommend this book. I really do. Then she was gone by Lisa Jewell. I really recommend it. Um, and then the three books that I actually have here with me, so we'll, first one we'll talk about is the one that took me four months to read, and it's called Dreamland. This book is really good. Um, it's a nonfiction book. It's written by a journalist, and that's why it took me so long to read. It was very heavy writing. Uh, you can tell it's written by a journalist. It is about, so it's the true tale of America's opioid epidemic. It's sad, man. It's sad. <laughs> It's sad, but it leaves you on a note that you're like, we can, we can move forward. We can move on. Um, unfortunately, I watched an episode of the Patriot Act on Netflix that was about the opioid epidemic and it talks about a new drug that the FDA just approved. That's probably just going to put us right back at square one. Whoop do fucking do. What's new? <laughs> um, but it, it parallels talking about how the opioid epidemic started in Mexico and how it got brought to the United States. And it parallels that with kind of like what's happening in the Midwest, which was really destroyed by the opioid epidemic. Like it talks about Columbus, Ohio um, as a really big point. And I'm not saying the Midwest is, that's all they are, is opioids. That's not true at all. But it, it really damaged um, the culture and communities in the Midwest and this book just really describes it in raw detail with a lot of interviews a lot of work was put into it um there's the side of the law enforcement there's the side of the user and there's the side of the dealer all in this book wrapped up beautifully I read and watch a lot of movies about 
the opioid epidemic. I'm very interested in it. Another really stellar book, if you're interested, that's a much easier read is called Drug Dealer MD. And it's written from the point of view of a doctor. I believe she's a psychiatrist that she handles addiction. And it talks, she uses her patient's stories, obviously using HIPAA, so you don't know who her patients are, to explain how the current or the last 10 years of healthcare industry has fueled the opioid epidemic. And that's a great book that's much easier to read than this one and it's a different point of view. So I'm gonna put some of my favorite, favorite sounds bad, but some of the things that I've read that I like the most about the opioid epidemic and some movies and docu-series that um, you can watch if you're interested in it. This book was a heavy read, but if you're really interested in it, there's a lot of really great information and really good statistics about um, the opioid epidemic. The next book that I read was Call Me By Your Name. Um, it was good. I don't think that I loved it as much as everybody else did. It is a male to male romance um, with Elio and good God. It's not even on the back. And I didn't even write it down. It's it's another name. Clearly, like, you know, I probably should reread this book in a different mindset that, um, you know, what the frick? <sighs> okay. What the heck? Every page that I've flipped to ha doesn't have the names on it. Oliver. Wow, I'm really disappointed that I couldn't remember that because I remember reading it and being like, that's phenomenal. I love that name. Oliver. I really think it's Oliver. I don't know. I don't know. Oliver and Elio, we're going with that, okay? It's based in Italy. Um, it's a kind of like coming of age romance and... Um, it's really good, you know? I do want to reread it maybe in a couple months. I read it while I was finishing up my bachelor's degree, so I think I didn't pay as much attention. And I read it in one day, which I absolutely can read a book in one day and I can digest it. But I think this book kind of deserves a second pass. There's a lot of elements to it that some made me really uncomfortable, not gonna lie. Uh, but you know what? Overall, it was a really... It's a, it's a situation that I've never been in and I think it deserves me to read it again. But otherwise, I, I, I would recommend this book. I really do. It's a great um, coming of age LGBTQ romance. The next and final book that I read this month is called Dangerous Games by Margaret Macmillan. Um, I, I'm glad that I read this, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. Um... It talks about, it's a nonfiction book, and the tagline is the uses and abuses, the uses and abuses, that sounds wrong, the uses and abuses of history. So basically it talks about historical events that we manipulate, and it, it's not so much specifically telling you about history, it's not a history book. But it uses some examples of where we've changed the narrative as a society to fit an agenda. Um, and it was in this book that I learned about the Daughters of the Confederacy. They're a no-go. They're a no-go, okay? Let's just put it that way. Um, and it talks just about how we use history incorrectly and that we have changed the role of the historian to pick a side and we need to bring it back to telling the absolute truth. We cannot um, pick a side when we're telling history. History has to be told as it happened and we are doing a disservice to our society, our community, and the world when we aren't accurately depicting history because then people can't make a decision for themselves on what side they lie on. Um, it's really relevant in today's time. It really is because politicians abuse history all the time or they just choose to forget things have happened. Um, and a lot of people choose to forget that things have happened. And this book talks about how that is very dangerous. 
um, it's dangerous to try and just forget about something and pretend like it didn't happen. It's super important that we are educated about it and you would never just tell somebody, oh, just move on. Like you need to know what happened. You need to understand what happened. And this book talks about the importance of it. It's a really short book. Um, and I recommend that if you are kind of interested in understanding the complexity of history and the role that it plays in modern times to read this book and pick it up. It was really well written. So that's everything that I read from May and I'm just going to kind of give you a glimpse into June. I've already listened and read a book and I have started this book called Homegoing and oh my god pick it up. 100% pick it up. I am so sad that I had never heard of this book before this um, movement to include black authors, which it's unfortunate that we have to have a movement, but here we are. Um, this movement to bring black authors to the front. I'm mad. I'm bitter. Barnes and Noble, why did you never recommend this to me? I'm bitter. It is so good. That's all I'm going to say. You'll hear about it in my June video that I make. And then I think my plan is that I'm going to read. So you want to talk about race because right now I'm having a very hard time discussing the, the importance of the Black Lives Matter movement and the unimportance of the looting to people because people are so flippin' fixated on things that they should not be. Um, and I am doing a horrible job talking to them about it. I'm doing a horrible job being able to conversate why this is important and why this is happening. I think a part of it is that I'm super uneducated and I'm working really hard to educate myself and I'm doing, uh, I'm listening to podcasts. I have bought some books about it. I'm working to do that. And I know this is going to be, this is going to be a long time of me doing this, but I also don't think that you have to be fully educated to understand why this is important. So I am doing a really bad job talking about it because to me, I feel like I have to have all this knowledge to be able to talk about it. And that is not true at all. You can be an advocate without knowing everything. I've been an advocate of other things without knowing everything, yet for some reason, I'm really struggling with this. So I got this book because I want to be able to speak up and be an ally um, to this community so that nobody talks shit about their back and behind their back, especially when I'm there. I'm over it. I'm done with it. I'm stopping it if I can. So I'm going to use this book and I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to read about it and I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to be an advocate and I'm going to use this book kind of to help guide me um, and how to have those conversations. And obviously I'm using other resources so that I have the education to back up what I'm talking about. So that's something I'm going to read. Um, I'm, I'm torn. I feel like I, uh, I'm not going to read that many books this month because it's already like almost over I'm pretty sure I don't I don't even know the date so that's where I'm at so I'm I picked up Pride and Prejudice I feel like it's a classic that I've never read uh I think it's kind of like subtle feminism like I'm pretty sure she's like a feminist I don't know I feel like I'm gonna read this book and then I'm gonna read what other people wrote wrote about it because you know this is like a literary thing thing that people have written about um I don't know. I feel like it's a, it's like a feminist. She's a feminist before her times, obviously, because this is like, I think the 1800s. But what, what I know, I don't know anything about the book except Mr. Darcy's hot. That's all I know. So, and that is just what I've been told by people. Maybe I'll think he's gross. I have no idea. So it's between a literary classic and Stephen King's misery. Maybe I'll get to both of them. Maybe I'll read uh, one of them and then get through half of the other one in June. I'm not sure. This is also, I'm pretty sure, a classic in the horror thriller genre. I wish it gave me the genre on it because I literally don't know. Um, but basically, I'm super excited to read this book because I want to watch the movie and I tell myself that I need to read the book first, which reminds me I want to watch the movie of Call Me By Your Name, but can't find it for free. So I got to just deal with it and buy it um, or rent it. So this is just another like read that I really want to do that I've heard a lot about. And so this is coming up soon. So that's kind of my plan. It 
will probably change if I'm being completely realistic with myself. But uh, May was a really good reading month for me. I didn't hate any of them. Uh, that one romance one, like, wasn't my jam. But I listened to it while gardening and stuff like that. So it didn't really bother me that I didn't like it, if that makes sense. Like, I don't hold as much weight to the books I listen to on audio because it's just kind of like, well, and I got it for free on Hoopla. So it's kind of like, well, it is what it is. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I have another video to film after this. So my next video that I post, I'm going to be wearing the same exact thing and you're not going to judge me, nor are you going to say anything because that would just be rude because I have to cram everything that I can in so that I could just go do nothing. Okay. Got to do something to do nothing. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope that you pick up some of these books and let me know what you think about them. Feel free to let me know how you feel about any of them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.